Give me a C, give me an R, give me an O, C, H, E, T. What's that spell? Crochet. Crochet. Go crochet! No, seriously, go crochet. <laughs> it's Mikey here from redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd. I'm high on Team Spirit today as we work with Team Spirit yarn with the little featured project. So let's uh, dive a little bit more into this and I'll tell you a little bit about the benefits of Team Spirit and how you can make one of these fabulous little sweaters for yourself. So introducing Team Spirit yarn by Red Heart and this yarn is geared toward organizations, schools, it's geared towards new crocheters to get them excited about crochet as well as knitters. We shouldn't forget about the knitters. But this yarn has two different colors. There's lots of many colors and I know the Red Heart team did some research to find the most popular school organizational colors in the US and so you'll see those numerous available colors on redheart.com. So what we have today is that this yarn is self striping. So the sense that when you do this yarn it'll stay one color for a while and then it will change on its own to the second color. So when you're looking at a baby sweater like the, this, you'll notice that you see one color and you'll notice that it will automatically change color on its own throughout. So when you're working on this project, you don't have to worry about cut strings, uh, changing colors. That's what makes it a really good beginner's project is that you can be successful and have the organizational colors that you wish. So here's the project we're going to be working on today. It's the baby sweater available from six months all the way to 24 months. You will notice that in the pattern that it has parentheses and I'm going to explain that as we get down to the studio and what I'm going to be working on is the six month version just like so. So it's a really quite an easy pattern to work on. I'm going to tell you if you're interested in a baby sweater, maybe you don't have Team Spirit or access to a Team Spirit, this video is still very good because you're going to be able to follow along and make probably your very first baby sweater ever. It's such a simple and easy pattern to work with. You have four different panels. You have the front, you have the back and then you have a sleeves and there's two of them so they're both identical. So really in central we have only three patterns to follow the front, back and and a sleeve and then you just have to do a second sleeve when you're ready and then we're just going to sew everything together bada boom bada bing. This pattern does not take very long at all and I think you'll be exceptionally pleased. As we're working on the yarn you'll notice that it will change color on its own and that's what you know a great thing for new crocheters. They don't want to change colors because then they don't want knots. The yarn is doing all the work for you. Where it transitions and changes color is completely random. So some people would prefer that their stripes are always like symmetrical. This yarn yarn does not provide that but you know who's to say that you have to have everything symmetrical. Sometimes, sometimes things are just completely artistic and that's one thing I love about this yarn that it gives you an opportunity to have different colors with, especially as a new crochet without having to have you know knots within your work. So without further ado let's go down to the studio and start working on this. Oh by the way if you're looking for the draft we do have a video on the draft as well as a free pattern on redheart.com and very very fun and exciting. So let's head on down now. To get started here's the pattern and I'll provide that in the information link of this video and we're just going to be following along as per the instructions. So we're going to start off with the back and we're going to be uh, doing that and then coming to do the front and then we're going to be coming down and then doing the sleeves. So we're going to be using a size six and a half millimeter crochet hook today, size K and it's just really really quite simple. So really it's just a matter if you know how to go back and forth maybe like a dishcloth, it's just a slightly little bit more work but not a lot to really get scared about. So let's begin. I'm going to be using two colors today. Uh, first color transition will be white to like a burgundy red and then the second one will be white to a gold. And you know just because there's two colors in a ball your school colors may have three or four colors so you can mix and match your team spirits together in order to create really interesting effects. So let's begin now. In today's tutorial you're going to be working with the self striping yarn and I know many of you including me like to see consistency when doing panel work. What I recommend to you is that see where this white piece is here. This is actually just past the transition of 
the actual burgundy here. So what I just did is that I just uh, looked at my yarn just pulled out a bit of the burgundy till I got to the white and then I trimmed it so I could start off with a solid color. And what this will mean is that when I go to do the back panel of this is that I'm gonna do the same so that the white then is following all the way around. This is just something that can be for you. You can like it very inconsistent. It's completely up to you. It is your creativity but that's what I would recommend when doing this project. To begin I'm going to be working with the smallest size of six month and it is in parentheses there's three different sizes and it says chain 27, 29 or 33 and when you pick one you just have to make sure you stick to it. So 27 is the six month, 29 is the 12 months and 33 is the 24 months. So what I would recommend is that you go through your pattern and then highlight all the instructions that you need in order to work it out so you don't accidentally mess it all up. So let's uh, begin we're going to start off with the slip knot today and insert into your hook. So we're just going to be doing chaining 27 and doing the six month. Just substitute any of the information I'm giving you to the other sizes if you wish to do something else. Remember that this does not count as one. We simply just chain. So one, two, three, four, and five. And in my case I'm going all the way to 27. You could go to 29 or 33 depending on your size. Okay so I have my chain ready and it's chaining of 27 in my case. So what we're going to be doing now is going to single crochet the second chain from the hook. So we look at one and go to the second. What I recommend is turn that upside down and go for the back loop only. Don't go into a side one here. Just turn it over and go into the back. This will turn over the chain so you have the perfect edging along the bottom of the baby sweater and we're going to single crochet. So once you do the first one you'll notice that the second one is just ready and just standing up for you in order to just do. So just single crochet yourself all the way across this and you will notice that you'll have the perfect bottom edging as you're working across. So single crochet all the way across. I'll see you back in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way along and making sure I get to my very last stitch and single crochet. Okay so this is what it will look like. So you can pull that tighter just like that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to turn around. So that was row number one. So this is row number two. This is how you always start off your rows. Okay so no matter what you're doing here. So we're just going to chain one first. Okay we're moving to row two and then we come into the same chain or space underneath. Okay for a single crochet. And then we begin to single crochet the remainder going across. So that's all you have to just do. So this whole first section of this um, baby outfit is just back and forth like a dishcloth as we go along. And the colors will transition on their own when they're ready. So just single crochet yourself for row number two across. We're coming up to the end of row two and I want you to be able to identify your stopping points. Okay. So what we have is we have only one stitch but it looks like there's two but there's only one. Okay. So we just have to make sure that you're never going to be putting in too many extra stitches. Okay. So do you see that? It seems like it's worked out pretty good. So we're going to turn our work and now it says from rows three to seventeen is that we're going to repeat repeat what we know. So we're going to chain one single crochet across for rows all the way from three to seventeen. Now if you're working on the other sides it'll be either three to nineteen or three to twenty three. So what I just did on my pattern is that I wrote the numbers three to thirteen because I'm doing the smallest size. And then what I want to do is that I want to check it off. Now I've already done a sample so I've already done that. So I'm just going to cross it out and then we're just going to work our way from three to thirteen. So do that now and you're just going to chain one to start and then we're going to single crochet. So see how I did the first one? You're just going to single crochet yourself all the way again across and we're going to do that. So when I come back I'll be done on row number seventeen and ready to start up. You'll see some color transitioning going on by the time I get back as well because the yarn will start changing colors. So as promised I've done now is rows three to seventeen off camera and now I'm ready to move up and what we're having at this point is that rows uh, eighteen is what we're going to be starting on. You could be on row twenty or twenty four and just follow the instructions as you go. So what we want to do at this point is that um, we're going to be doing um, chaining of one first. Okay so chain one. Okay and it says skip the first stitch and then single crochet in each stitch to the second to the last uh, two single crochets. So basically instead of coming straight down in like you normally would you're going to go immediately to the next one and single crochet and essentially you've just eliminated out one uh, crochet at this point uh, one stitch. 
Okay, so we're gonna go all the way across on this and when we get to the other side what we're going to be doing is that we're gonna be stopping on the second last one and then turning around. So we're not gonna go all the way to the end of the line because what we're doing is that if you notice on sweaters there's always an indentation of where the sleeves are fitting into and if you don't do that then you basically end up with a, a box that looks or a sweater that looks like a box. So we're just single crocheting ourselves all the way across. You can see the colors have transitioned off camera. I have to say I really like this color combo as well. So we're just going to continue to go all the way across and so you just look for the second last single crochet. So we just have to count over. So this is one, this is two. So we wanna make sure we go all the way to the second last. Okay, so it leaves the last one out of the, out of the line. And so you have this one out. So it's slight, it's just very slight at this moment. So we're gonna turn our work and then move up to the next row. So the next row is the identical. So again, and we're working on the smallest size, don't forget, is that we're going to chain one and we're going to skip the first one. So not straight down, go to the second one over and we're going to single crochet ourselves along again to the second last single crochet. So you can see what's happening on here is that this is going to be coming in on an angle and then eventually we have to do this one more time for the smallest size that we're working on at this moment and then what's gonna happen is that we're gonna then build straight up into the neck area at that point when we get there. So I'll see you at the end of the line here. Okay, so we're coming all the way across. Remember that we just wanna go to the second last one again like we did before and again it will be just slightly in, not really that noticeable but it's noticeable when you're doing this project uh, when you're going to try it on your baby. Let's turn our work and we're gonna do that one more time. This is the, the last time we're gonna be shrinking it in so we're gonna chain one first. We skip the first one, go to the second over. Okay, and then just continue to single crochet. So basically you can see that you have like a diagonal going on as you've done it so it's no longer straight up, it's on an angle to make room for your sleeves that when you're ready to put those in. So just go all the way across and then we're going to stop on the second last single crochet. And again when we get all the way across we're just making sure we stop on the second last one. So now we're ready to turn our work and so you can see that the indentation is going on on this side as well. And so now we're gonna turn our work and look at the instructions. It says rows from 21 all the way to 29 is just repeating of rows two. So rows two is just chain up one and then single crochet into every one going. So just again on your piece of paper just write down your numbers that you wanna do and just check them off as you go. Now if you're working on other rows then what you're gonna have is this rows 23 uh, will be to 31 and then rows 27 to 37 depending on what you want to do. So basically you just have to make sure you keep adjusting this to your size. So just goes, so if you're doing the six month just do 21 to 29 uh, going straight up back and forth just like you did and if you're using Team Spirit you'll see the colors transition again. Okay, so we have the front panel now done. We have our sleeve indentations in the armholes and now it's time to work on the shoulders. Shoulders are so simple, it's actually pretty scary how simple they really are. So we're gonna work on the first one, then we're going to fasten off and start on the second. So do you notice how I'm starting on this side here? We wanna make sure that when we do the second one we're also looking at the same side and I'll show you some tips on that as we go. So let's do the first one. It says chain one, and then it says single crochet into the first four. So there's brackets there if you're doing another sizes. So one, two, three, and four. That's it. <laughs> there is one uh, partial of your shoulder and it says to turn our work. Okay and then it says to um, repeat row two once again. So we're just going to chain one and then single crochet the remainder. That's the first shoulder. Seriously. Isn't that crazy? So there is one shoulder done. <laughs> and now I know it can't be any more simpler. When I saw that for the first time I was like flipping out. I'm like that is too simple to be true. So what I want to do is that I want to just leave this, um, just weave it, I just cut the string, just weave it off and just weave it in. Now I was strategic with my color changing. Uh, like I explained in the very beginning of this video is that I wanted to make sure that the colors transition properly. So I started my yarn ball right where the white started. And so what's gonna happen here is now I'm gonna start the other one. So we're gonna just immediately come over. Okay. And so it says to skip a number of stitches. But can I give you a secret? If you know that you did four stitches on this side, so one, two, three, and four, I just count back and do 
starting from the fourth. You can count all the way across but nothing's worse than doing this whole thing and then realizing that you have not um, skipped enough stitches. So let's just start off with a Jenner slip knot. I'm using the white again because it makes sense. Okay, so if we notice that we have to then do four, so we've got one, two, three, and four, I'm gonna fasten on on the fourth. Okay, and just fasten on and then chain one and then just single crochet into the same one. So one and see how I'm putting that straggler down on the top of the line like so. That means that it will be buried in so you'll never see where I stopped and started. So you got your four, you're going to turn your work so just chain one and then basically just single crochet again across there and then fasten off. And your first panel is officially done. So again just trim your work or trim your end, pull through and weave it in through the top just like so. And just leave these tails all just out to the um, next part of this project. When we come back we're going to be starting on to the back of the of the project or sorry, the front uh, panel. So this is the back. So you can see that we have a nice uh, box shape at the bottom. We have our arm shape holes and then we have our shoulders just like so. To keep my project consistent I'm ready to start off with the next one. So I want to make sure that I'm going to start off properly and that I really want to see um, the starting off in the white. Now I've already worked with white on this particular strand here so if I start it the, the red is going to be off on the back if you would like consistency. So what you have to just do is that you just have to wind a ball. You can always use this yarn further on in the project in the sleeves if you would like to if you're but I'm looking for a bit of consistency at this point. Okay and so there is the white once again and I'm just going to trim it right there and then I'm going to put this aside and then I'm going to save that for later and now I'm ready for white to starting the front panel of this particular sweater. So we're going to begin again. We're doing the front panel. It's very 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 similar to the uh, to the front or to the back that we've already done and we're just going to create a slip knot like so and we're just going to keep the same count. So it says to repeat um, work is the same as the back to the arm shape hole. So we just have to look at the back instructions and see what it says. So for me it was chain 27 again. Remember that didn't count as one. So one, two, three, four and five and then what I want to do is go all the way to 27. You may be going to 29 or 33 once again. When you get your 27 done you could have 29 or 33 depending on you. Again second chain from the hook again turn your chain over and just single crochet yourself across the line on the back um, loop that you see and that will make the very perfect bottom edge like you will uh, would want in the bottom of a sweater. So just single so, uh, crochet yourself all the way across. So I've now come all the way back to the first part and now we're just going to turn it. Move up to row number two. Row number two is very consistent throughout this whole project. It's just meaning that you chain one and then single crochet. So you start off in the one right below and then you just single crochet yourself across the row. So continue to do that. So single crochet across the top of this row of stitches. So I'm at the end of row two and just going to turn. Now rows three to seventeen or again before like before you could be three to nineteen or three to twenty three depending on your size and basically I want you to do now rows three to seventeen, three to nineteen or three to twenty three on your own and when we come back we're going to be starting up the next part of this uh, particular front panel of your sweater. So just continue again on your sheet. Just uh, mark it off as you go so you don't lose your way and just voila and I'll see you in the back in just a moment. Okay I'm ready now to move up to the armhole shaping and so this is row number 18 if you're following along and it could be rows number 20 to 24 as well. So what we're going to be doing for the next three rows is we're doing the same thing is like we did for the front uh, sorry for the back panel and so we're just going to chain one first, skip the first stitch, go to the second and single crochet ourselves all the way across to the second single crochet and stop and then turn around and then uh, move up a row. So please do that. I'll meet you back up at the end of the row. Okay you need to go to the second last uh, single crochet on the row. Just watch the base here. You can see clearly see those things. So making sure that you're getting all the way to the second. Okay so let's uh, begin. We're going to turn our work and then move up to the next row. Next row is same thing. Chain one, 
skip the first one which is directly down and go to the next one over and single crochet yourself all the way to the second uh, single crochet over and then stop and turn and do this one more time. Okay, coming back to the other side making sure I stop one early. Okay, just to make sure I'm co coming into that indent. Let's do this one more time. So we're turning our work and last time we're uh, decreasing for our armholes. Chain one, skip the first one and go to the second. And single crochet yourself all the way to the second last single crochet. And this will conclude uh, making it smaller and then we'll move up to the next part in just a moment. And finally to the second last one and we're going to stop and then that concludes the indentation and it's so minor but it's really required to keep the shaping looking great each and every time. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to turn our work and then move up and we are going to be doing rows number 21 all the way to 27. Okay, so rows number 21 to 27. Now this is different from the back. In the back what we did is that we went even higher and the reason for it is that the front of it, the neck line is a little bit more um, lower so that it can create a front and the back panel. So to do this uh, rows number 21 all the way to 27 is to repeat row 2. So you just chain 1 and then single crochet into each one and you just continue back and forth just like that uh, very easily. So I'll meet you back up at the end of row number 27. I'm back and now I'm going to start rows number 28 and it could be 28 or 32 depending on what size uh, you're working on. And it says to chain 1 and then single crochet into the first eight and there's brackets uh, eight or nine depending on your size and then we leave, uh, leave the remaining unworked. So we're just going to start off we're just going to do eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just like that. And we'll run, we want to remember that number of eight because I'm going to show you a tip in just a moment. So let's turn our work. So let's turn our work and move up to row number 29. And it says to slip stitch in the first two stitches and then chain one and single crochet into the remaining and turn. So what we want to do is slip stitch in the first two stitches. Okay, so we're just going to go slip one and slip two. So we're creating like a V neck kind of idea and then we're going to single crochet into the remainder. Okay, so that kind of just pulled it over. It'll make sense once you put your border around the top of this uh, particular sweater you'll see this totally making sense at that time. And then we're going to turn our work again. It says chain one and then single crochet um, into the first uh, four. So we're going to start off one, two, three, and four and leave remaining stitches unworked. Okay. So we're going to turn our work and really simple we're just going to repeat rows number two three more times. So rows number 31, 32 and 33 will all be the same. So we're just going to chain one and then single crochet. There will only be four stitches on the top. So that was uh, 31. Oops, make sure I get them both into the same stitch. 31, I'm just going to turn, chain one, single crochet into the four. That was row number 32. Turn our work and go in to final for 33 and then this shoulder is completely done. So it kind of looks uh, unusual the way that it is shaped at this moment but it will make sense once you begin to work on the other side and then start to do all of this. All of this eventually balances and um, shapes itself properly. We're going to fasten off at this time and uh, just like so we're going to start on the next shoulder on the other side. And we're going to repeat the same thing and the tip is is that once we get there we just got to make sure we're starting off properly in order to keep everything consistent. To start the next side I want you to turn the project as if you were doing it before. So this will be on the right hand side. If you are right handed it could be on your left hand side if you're left. So remember how we had eight here? That is the secret. So what I want to do is I want to grab my white on the other side. I want the tops to be consistent and what I want to do is that I want to count eight stitches over. 
So I got, so I'm gonna count eight stitches over. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's where I'm gonna fasten on. Now I told you to count over, but what happens if you're off by one stitch? You're gonna have a, a neck that is off by one and it really doesn't uh, look that fabulous. So I wanna fasten on, chain one, and then single crochet into all of the stitches remaining to the end. See where that straggler is? I'm just trapping it into position underneath so that you'll never see that starting and stopping point. Great tip there. Uh, let's just continue and get right to the end of the line. So there should be a total of eight. So, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight coming into the end. Just like so. Making sure I am trapping that straggler and I can trim it safely afterward. And now I'm ready to start turning my work the other way. So if you remember when we did this side, when we started off, we did two slip stitches. We're not doing that on this side because we are working in the reverse. So what we're going to do at this time is that we're going to chain one as per the instruction and then we are going to single crochet ourselves into the next six. So we're not worrying about that single crochet like we had been on the other side because we're not at the same uh, point. We're actually doing the rows but at a different point. Okay, so we have our six in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There should be two remaining unworked, which is fine. And now we're ready to turn our work once again. So we're gonna turn our work and this time we are going to slip stitch in for the first two. Okay, so we immediately just slip stitch right into the first two single crochets. So one and two. And this will leave on four. And where have we seen four before? We've seen it right here. So we're going to do the next four. Just like that. Okay, very easy. And now we're just going to turn around and now we're going to do rows number 31 to 33. Same thing that we've already done with row number two. Chain one and single crochet in for four. One, two, three, and four. Turn your work, rows number 32. So one, two, three, and four. And then turn your work, and then one, and two, or sorry, that was one, <laughs> two, and three, and four. And we're about, we're gonna fasten off at this point. So that concludes the end. So this is what we kind of have for this. You can kind of see it looks a little bit different from the way that we started on, but the, this is the whole point of this whole thing. It will balance out as we get ourselves all the way around. I want to point out something that doesn't appear to be obvious but it is obvious uh, to me and what happens is, is that remember when we single crocheted on this side and what happens do you see how it's stepping up here and you don't really see it going on in this side that's because the single crochet um, slip stitching makes it look a little more hidden but it is there and when we do this with uh, when we go all the way around uh, for the top border it will look and balance so just have the trust in it, it even though you don't see the stepping uh, stairway now it will appear after. So here we have it. We have two panels. You can see the back panel has just one indent or one protrusion upward and then the front one has the neckline going on. They should be relatively the same size and they will stretch if you're just slightly off as well. You know, you don't have to frog anything and you can see once you put everything together you'll see that the front kind of dips lower than the back and we're going to be putting on a border to that so it really makes it consistent. I, I, was, I was also consistent with my um, stitching going all the way around you know just by being strategic on where I stopped and start my yarn so that it appears almost the same no matter how you turn the child around. So let's begin to do the sleeves next. So I'm about to show you how to do the sleeves and what I recommend like I did before is that I recommend that you reset your yarn so that you're at a point. So I just wound up the gold here and I'm just going to trim it after it changes back to white. Therefore you can have both sleeves virtually identical to each other. It's up to you. The creativity is really certainly uh, your business. So what we're going to start off with is that we're going to start off narrow just like this and we're gonna work our way up to the top of the shoulder. See how you, you can see the top of the shoulder has a rounded edge. That's not a big deal. Very easy to follow. This is really quite an exceptional and easy project. So this is not technically a square. It's like a pie shape and then once you kind of fold it together that you can kind of see that the, the 
sleeves will have a bit of a shape to it once it's attached together. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start off with our instructions and we're going to create a slip knot and grab our hook and let's begin to do this particular project. So we're just going to chain off 19. So just like you did before. Uh, just this doesn't count, count as a slip uh, knot. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 and go all the way to 19. If you're doing bigger sizes you will have 19 or 21 as your other option. So you just have to look at the parentheses. Like you did with the both front and back panels you're going to come second chain from the hook. Again turn that chain around get the back of that and that will make a really perfect edging look. So just single crochet yourself across the chain. Um, these uh, sleeves really do not take as much time as the, the back and the front panel. They're really quite easy. Um, it's just a matter of following instructions and just checking the list off as you go. So single crochet all the way across. Once you get all the way to the other side just stop. You've run out of stitches. Let's turn our work. Move up to row number two again uh, chain one. And row number two is really important. Everything comes back to row number two in this particular project. And we're just going to single crochet starting off in the first one and working our way across. So single crochet across for row number two. Okay, I just finished off row number two going across. Now it's time for row number three. Row number three is an important row because we do something slightly different. So remember how I said we're starting off narrow and then we're getting bigger? Row number three and you'll see it referred to several times within this particular part is that we have to come back and do this. So we're going to chain one and we're going to put two single crochets into the same stitch below and this will increase the row by one on this side and what we're going to do is just single crochet ourselves all the way across and on the other side we're going to put two single crochets in the very final stitch to conclude off row number three. So it's a way to gradually grow it without being drastic which is adding on a couple extra stitches in the row equally on both sides of this panel. So I'm just continuing along. It's no big deal. It's a really quite of an easy project. Um, I wish I would have filmed this a long time ago. I actually did this uh, project I think about almost six months ago and I just been taking my time just trying to get it to go. And now here we go. Last stitch chain or single crochet two times. And so this concludes off row number three. Okay, row number four to eight and there's uh, five rows then all together. You're just going to complete row number two. So row number two is just simply chain one and single crochet into each of that. So please do rows number five to eight on your own. Just uh, on your sheet, I've already done it myself, is that I just check off what I want to do when I'm going across. So this time I put a line through it because I've already done the first panel. So just continue to keep yourself organized and do rows number four to eight which is the regular chain one single crochet across. So I've now done rows three to eight on my own and you can see it here. And so now going to rows number nine to fourteen and there will be other ones. You have to watch the parentheses because it repeats how many. So basically the first size is repeated only once and then the second uh, size is two and then the uh, third size is three. So you have to pay attention to that. So to begin it says rows number three to eight one more time. Remember three is uh, chain one and then two single crochets into the first one, single crochet all the way across and then two on the other side and then the remainder is just like row two again. So chain one, single crochet. So please do three uh, rows three to eight one more time if you're doing the small sizes and uh, repeat the instructions for the other sizes if you're doing those as well. When I come back I'll be on row number 15 and uh, we're going to be almost done once we get that point. Okay so I've just repeated rows number three to eight one more time. I'm actually on row number 14 just finished that and now I'm ready for row number 15. For you it could be row number 21 or 27 depending on the size you're working on. So we're going to increase this again. So to start off with we're going to chain one and then two single crochets right in the beginning and we're going to do that. Uh, just single crochet all the way across and then in the final uh, last stitch put in two single crochets again. So we're increasing the size to uh, be more bold or sorry to be more open at the top of the arm. So again just a reminder the final stitch of this round of this row will be two single crochets and you can see it change color in the middle. So if you see if there's a camera trick no. So what we have now is that we're going to repeat uh, do some rows. Repeat rows again. Row 16 all the way to 22 for my size will be row number two. 
So row number two is just chain up one and then just single crochet across and then you may have a different one. So just follow the ones in parentheses. Again write those numbers from 16 all the way to 22 and just check them off as you go. And when we come back we just have three more rows to go after this uh, section and this will be complete off this uh, sleeve. Okay we're just doing the final conclusion of the top of the sleeve. I'm on row number 23 now to 23, 24 and 25. Three rows doesn't matter what size you're working on. It's still the final three rows that we're working on. So to begin these ones say uh, here the next three rows as we chain one we skip the first one and then single crochet into the next. Okay so we're creating a rounded edge at the top of the sleeve so that it provides a better shaping for the child. So when we go all the way across we're going to stop one short and so just stop on the single uh, second single crochet in and then we're going to turn our work and begin again and doing the same thing. Chain up one, skip the first one and go over and then go to the second again. So let's uh, just uh, quickly do that. I'll see you back up in just a moment. So toward the end of it we just want to make sure we go to the second last one and then turn our work. So turn, chain one, skip the first one, go to the second. So you've already done this before. It's just a matter of a quick review. So we're going to do this one more time. Go to the second last one, chain up and then uh, do this line one more time and that will conclude off the top. So I'll meet you at the end of this line just to review to make sure you're on track. Okay just coming all the way to the end. Make sure we skip and we get to the last one, second last one. Stop, turn, chain one, skip the first one, go to the second and then stop at the second last one and then we're going to fasten off and this will conclude off the sleeve. If this is your first sleeve you, you have to reverse the video back and uh, start again. You just need two sleeves for this entire project. Really quick and easy. You can see it's come together quite nicely. So just stop at the second one, uh, last one, uh, fasten off and we'll start the next part of this tutorial of starting to put things together. So now we have our two sleeves, we have our front and back panel and now it's time to begin. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put our sleeves aside for a second and we're going to start off and we're going to attach the first panel to the second. And what we need to do is that we need to attach it on the top. So essentially we have to just look at it, okay, and basically the top protrusion pieces like so are going to attach together. Now see how I left an extra long string? I'm going to use that same string to whip stitch these together and I'm going to do it on both sides and then I'm going to fasten off and then the, the basically the, it'll be attached in the center just like so. So that's our first step and I'll review how to whip stitch in just a moment. Okay to whip stitch you just want to get a darning needle and just feed on one of the loose ends that you had left. Okay we're going to be using a different string to do the re remainder but we can use this. So essentially I'm just going to take this so this is coming from the back end and I'm just going to come up through the stitches on the first panel and then back through the second panel. Okay so this once I start doing this this will be classified as the inside of the of the sweater just like so. Okay so what I want to do is just come back over the top in through the front again and through to the back like so. And we're just coming up over top making sure the string comes over the top. Don't do it too tight to the point where it's really stressed. You just want to get it so it's nice and firm but also so that it stays consistent on both sides. Making sure that everything is aligning properly on the other side of the back one as well. Like so. So now what I want to just do is I want to tie this off. So to do that what I'm going to do is just I'm going to slide the hook into under some stitches. Okay not too deep. You just want them to be trapped in the fibers going in one direction. And I want to have total of three directions. So that's one. Okay, and I want to go back in the same direction from where I came from. Two and three. So I'm just going in a different spot. And essentially a string can never come out if it's going in three directions like this. And so now I can just wind that off and just slip in. So what I want you to do before we carry on in this, all these loose ends that you have left hanging out, I want you to hide them in. Now they're not going to fall out at all. So you just basically using a darning needle and you just kind of just sliding in, uh, them in just like you just saw me do. So I'm just going to take the darning needle going into the same area and I want you to do this for the other side as well just like so. 
and the ones that are on the top level or the bottom levels by the bottom we're going to be dealing with that when we do the borders and so we just want to just hide them into the fibers so that we can safely trim those out and making sure you go in three different directions as well to have the ultimate fit. Especially if you're going to be washing this you really do want it to hold up to the washing machine just like this. So now we can safely trim it right there and you don't even see it and on the other side you have a really great join just like this. So continue to do the same for the other side. I'll meet you back up in just a moment. So here's what it looks like at this point. We're still looking at the inside of the sweater. So if you folded it like this, this will be the outside. And now it's time to attach the sleeve. So we have it attached here using the yarn that was available. I'd recommend that you get a different yarn or thread to do the sleeves. I did it with the original just like so and I didn't like the way it turned out. I think you need a thinner yarn. I'm using the new Red Heart Sizzle for this and basically it's a thinner yarn but so it'll hide better into the project. If you look at the original that I did do you can clearly see that the yarn is kind of not showing a really great look and I wish I would have used a similar color to it but much thinner and uh, when you're looking at from the inside just like so. So it's just a, a matter of uh, making a decision that works for you. Again I'd recommend a smaller thread. So what we're going to do is that we're just going to take off some thread just like so and we're only going to do along the the area right here. Okay for one of the sleeves. So we're going to trim and we'll put that on our hook. Let's grab one of our sleeves and we want to lay it down. Okay and we're just going to lay it down so it's matching. So right when you did the decrease right in there that's exactly where this piece is going to slip into. So you may have to stretch it around play with it a little bit to match it to both sides but uh, that's where we're going to start attaching everything next. So what we need to do is that we need to match the indentation in so you know how it came around at the top here and so I want to start at the first one there and I'm going to just bring in my yarn, my thread and I created a slip knot here and I'm just going to slip that through and that'll nice and snug it there. So what I want to do now is that I want to look where this started. So that's exactly where I'm just going to go into the other side like so. Okay. So we're going to, I'm just going to whip stitch these together. So it's kind of loose right now but it will tighten up in just a moment. So I'm coming into the sleeve and then I'm coming back into the other side. And I just want to grab a few fibers. Okay. I don't want to be too um, grabbing too much because then it will really look terrible. So we just want to continue along. Now what you need to pay attention to is how many stitches that you're using here because you need to make sure that the sleeve can get all the way back to the other side here. So we just have to be very conscientious on the stretching of it and the way that it goes and just continue to whip stitch it as you go and once you pull everything nice and tight on the other side it should be pretty seamless. Okay, when you get to the end of the whip stitching, look how fabulous that looks. So much better than what I did on the original and it looks great. I'm just going to pull make sure I pull everything nice and tight. You can't second guess yourself with this one here. And again, I just want to make sure I'm just forming a quick little knot and then I want to do that that sliding of um, getting it three times in three different directions. So nice and tight. I want to do that one more time. And I need you to do the same thing for the other side. Make sure that you are working on the same side. So I was doing it this way so when we attach our sleeve we make sure we do it over here as well. And then we're going to do some more sewing after that. So um, just to continue to do the other sleeve and when we come back I will start you off and we're going to start doing the final of making this actually look like a real sweater instead of just a flat panel the way that it appears right now. So right now we have a flat panel. You're looking at the inside of the sweater and now it's time to turn this a special way. So grabbing up these, the shoulders, I want you to grab it so that the inside of the sweater is facing out. And all you just need to do now is using a sewing needle from this side all the way to the bottom you will sew everything together and then do the same thing from this side all the way down. Okay, so you're doing it on the inside so you can see that this here is the inside of the of the sweater. So make sure it is the inside. Just start at the end and making sure everything just matches up as you're going all the way. I'd recommend using that same thin thread going all the way down and so this is what it will look like 
at this point. So when we come back I'll have that done for you and then we're going to start doing the trim work which will include doing the top, the bottom and the two wrist areas. So I've now managed to finish doing all the sewing and now it's time to turn this uh, right now because we're looking at the inside of the sweater. So I'm glad I used the thinner yarn, uh, the thinner thread to attach everything together. It looks a lot better. Um, no uh, weird bumps. So I'm just turning it inside or inside right. <laughs> I'm turning it so that if a child was wearing it you would see it. So now the fun part is going to begin of doing the edging. And the edging is really simple and it's the same for all of it. So I'm going to show you only one time and then I'm going to do the rest off camera and then when I come back I'll have everything done. So this is the outside of the sweater at this point and so the edging is just a matter of just tracing around with single crochet around all of it. Now remember those little uh, yarn that I started off with. I'm going to put yellow around so I'm, I'm not going to waste any yarn and then I'm going to put red on the top and the bottom of this. So you're going to want to put a border around both of the sleeves and here and all you just have to do is single crochet and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. To start off with I'm going to show you how to do the trim and it's the same for all of it and we're just going to do one layer of single crochet. So let's join it. So I'm going to join at the seam so if it was the sleeve or the top just join at a seam area and come right into a stitch. And do you remember how I had you turn the thing upside down? Do you remember how I had you turn it upside down? You're going to have a perfect edge here. So you can just really quickly follow along. It's well worth the time when you turn it upside down. Um, you know some people just uh, <laughs> just do whatever they want. That's fine. Um, we're going to just join it. And I'm just going to go around. So we're just going to single crochet to where we joined as well. Okay and then just single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So when you get to the other side and you're going to end up in the seam just you know make it look good. Just jump over and just quickly just do that. So when I come back I'll show you how to finish off and then you can do the rest of the bordering on your own for the sleeves and for the top. Okay I'm coming all the way back around and your eyes are not deceiving you. I actually decided to frog it and put in the yellow instead. I just thought halfway around it's like why am I doing it red when I got sleeves that are yellow. So again personal choice. So I'm going to come around and once I get all the way around I'm just going to join it with a slip stitch like so and then I'm going to safely cut off my yarn and then just weave in the ends like I've already showed you how to do to hide them and it's going to be really good. So I just want to quickly review the neckline before I let you do the rest of it and then after that everything is done. So I'm going to weave in that after. So when we're going to do the neckline all we just need to do is that we just need to follow it around. So we're going to come around the sides. Because you've done single crochet you can sim simply just come on the side of these and make it really look pretty sharp and it's really easy to do. So all you're just going to do one revolution and I'm going to join it again out of seam line and go all the way around. So do the remainder including the sleeves on your own and when I come back we'll have everything done. So here you have it. Here is my new sweater. Totally reminds me of a little rugby sweater. Isn't that cute? You can roll up your sleeves if you want to and it looks amazing just the way that I told you when you do it the trim around the top all of that stepping down in the front panel looks amazing. Really really happy with it. I'm even comfortable to even turn it around. So this is one of those uh, projects that are really cute and I have my original that I worked on. I realized that during my original that I never did really the, I did two back panels instead of one front. But you can see this is the way it looks like just in case you decided to do the same thing. It's uh, very different. I used a different size uh, crochet hook as well and uh, for the first one and you know what you can uh, determine what works for you, what doesn't and this has been a really amazing opportunity. So on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the crochet crowd please enjoy this tutorial and tell your friends all about it. If they want to learn how to make a cute little baby sweater this is the way to go. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the crochet crowd.